In this video, I want to show you two methods for creating a non-standard shape in PowerPoint like the one we have on the screen. Let's start with why would you want to create this in the first place. And let me show you an example. So I'm going to go into slideshow mode here. In a recent video, I showed how what you may want to do is to have an overlay on top of a complex, in this case it's an image, but it could be a chart or it could be a complex diagram, in order to show one area. So what I can do is use this non-standard shape, semi-transparent, to say here are the oil instruments on this particular uh, dashboard. Now, you'll notice I have to go around that gauge because that's, that's not an oil gauge. That's for something else. So this is not a rectangle. This has to be a non-standard shape. And so I would show the image. I'd say, now we want to focus on the oil instruments. Here's where they are on the panel. And then I can use Morph to zoom in on those instruments and we can talk about it further. So that's why you would want to use one of these non-standard shapes. But how do we create them in PowerPoint? So I want to show you two methods for it. Method number one is using the freeform shape tool. So the freeform shape tool is one of the standard tools in PowerPoint, but it allows you to go outside of the boundaries of, of the standard shapes. So what we can do is in our shapes list here, the freeform shape is actually in the lines section. And it looks like this odd closed shape here. So I could click on it. And if you just simply use it in its default, the cursor, you can click down and start drawing and you can draw and then close it and release your mouse button and you get a freeform shape. So that's hand drawn unless you're really really good at dragging your mouse completely straight it's going to be really hard to create the exact shape that you want especially if it has straight lines. So what can you do instead? Well one of the things you can do is to uh, use the grid that PowerPoint has in it and display it on the screen and then draw according to that. So I'm going to right click on uh, any part of my slide here that doesn't have content and click on grid and guides. It opens up the dialog box and you'll see the grid settings. So the spacing by default is 1 12th of an inch and I can say display the grid on the screen. When I click OK you'll now see the grid there and then it's also in how you use the freeform shape with this grid. So I'm going to go select the freeform shape again here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click but I'm not going to hold the mouse button what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key down and as I move you'll see because I'm I'm drawing on one of these grids it's a straight line because I keep holding the shift key down now I click again again I'm not holding the mouse down I'm just clicking in each spot to create the visual and this allows me to have straight lines so I can create kind of that uh, shape that I was doing. And then once you get close to closing it, it shows you by shading it. I click my last and I release the shift button. Now, this allows you to create any shape you want. Now, you'll notice that it's not perfect. So, for example, this uh, branch here is not as high as this branch over here. This one is wider than this because I'm kind of having to eyeball it. The, the grid helps me in that but it's not going to be perfect. If you if you want to edit it, then uh, what you can do is once you've selected the shape, go to the shape format ribbon under edit shape, select edit points. And you'll notice that we now have all the points where I clicked shown and I can adjust, I can move any one of those. I can just grab it and move it up or down sideways, however it is that I want to move it. Now notice when you do that though, so if I wanted to make this less wide, I'll grab this one, drag it over, grab this one, drag it over. But again, I'm kind of eyeballing to see is it straight and is it the same size? Notice now it's not quite straight. So it's a good method. The grid helps you to do that uh, in a more controlled manner if you have straight sides, but it's not going to be uh, perfect. But it is an option. It's a good option, especially if you're not having a shape that you can construct from other standard shapes because that's method number two. Method number two, we're going to use the merge shape. So I'm going to just right click and remove the grid here from the display. Merge shapes is a feature within PowerPoint that allows you to draw multiple shapes and then combine them 
into a single shape. So because what I want, the, the shape that we started with here, can be constructed from three rectangles, that's what I'll go ahead and do. So I'll just choose my normal regular rectangle tool. I'll draw the bottom. And then I'll choose my rectangle tool again and I'll draw one of the sides. Now to draw the sides I'm hoping that I line up with the previous uh, rectangle but I'm not always going to get that totally correct. Now you'll notice as I move this you see those smart guides show up the red dashed line that says hey you're you're lined up with another object on the slide so I can release that but you'll notice sometimes you don't get, always get that perfect and if I want to align the left side of this up rectangle with the right side of the down the sideways triangle it's not always the easiest to get the other side quick tip here click on that uh, up ranked rectangle hold the control key down that allows you to copy it and if you hold the shift key down it allows you to move it straight sideways and I can try to line it up and I missed. So here's one of the tips when you want to line up the different shapes. So the first tip is to use the align tool. So I'm going to select all the shapes. One way to do that is to click on the first shape, control click on the next one, control click on the next one. So that's one of the ways to do it. The other way to do it is just to take your cursor with nothing selected and draw a rectangle around all the shapes. It'll select everything inside that rectangle. So either through the arrange item on the home ribbon, here's a line, or you can go to the shape format ribbon, a line is right there, you can say, okay, I want to align all of these at the bottom edge. And it happens to be that I've aligned them all. Now you'll notice a line allows you to align things left, right, etc. All the different options there. But it doesn't have one where it says align the left side of one to the right side of the other. That's just not an option within PowerPoint. So here's the trick that I use, is I take a straight line. So I'm going to use my regular line tool here, just the, the regular line, and I'm going to draw a vertical straight line. So the way I'm going to do that is before I start drawing, I'm going to hold my shift key down, then I'm going to click and drag, and you'll notice even though my cursor isn't perfectly straight, the line is straight. Then I release my mouse button and release the shift key. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this line and the sideways rectangle at the left edge. So you notice I've moved the line to the right of the left edge. So when it moves over, it moves to the left. So I'm going to, I've am going got my line selected, control click on the rectangle, and say align to the left. Now that line is right on the left edge of the sideways rectangle. Now what I'm going to do is going to select line, and then I'll select this up rectangle, and here I'm going to say align to the right. So it'll move all the objects to the rightmost object. And now I have the sideways rectangle and the rectangle on the left lined up at their edges and I can move the line. Let's select just the line and move it out of the way. Okay, so once I've got my shapes all aligned, what I'll do is I'll select all of them. And on the shape format ribbon, I will go to Merge Shapes. And you'll notice you have a number of different combinations here that you can choose from. Feel free to uh, investigate those if you want. The one we're going to use here is the Union. The Union puts it all together. All of the shapes go together as one. So when you got all the shapes together as one, what happens is um, you now have a boundary that goes on the outside. So make sure that what you've done is you have positioned everything perfectly first because now you can't uh, move the individual sections. So this is different than grouping. Grouping, you still have the individual elements. Merge shapes creates a single element only. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, it does give you a single shape that you can then work with. If you realize, oh, something wasn't aligned, that's where that control Z undo, always a good thing to know about that. So if I say, hey, you know what, I'm not sure that this one's aligned, it didn't look aligned properly. Again, I can just use my trick here to align left. Undo that. Undo that. See how Control Z, the undo, works so well. I have to move it to the left and then say align to the right. 
and then select the line, this one, say a line to the left. Now, move my line out of the way, select all my shapes, and merge them. Now I have a single shape. You can now set the fill color however you want it for the one that you saw in the example with the uh, the cockpit set of instruments. I set the fill color to be white and 20% transparent and then added some text on top. So the two methods for creating a NOS standard shape, one is using the freeform shape. You can do it freehand or using the grid to try to guide you along. And the second is to use the merge shapes feature and using the alignment to get the various shapes lined up. Use that little trick of lining uh, both sides to a single line to get shapes to line up beside each other. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.